up. Stop knocking. Go away. I'm busy. That's how I used to speak to my mother. And now for the last time, I'll stick a needle into my arm. Uh, I didn't want to listen when Nikki tried to warn me about what she was selling me. And she was trying to keep me awake, but I'm junkie. I mean, junkie's always no better. The next thing, I'm on the carpet, on the floor, with a, a syringe, and with a needle in my arm, and the paramedic, and I'm coming out of it, and I ask what's wrong, and the paramedic assures me that I'm not dead. Yet. Coming uh, As I go to hospital, I go in and out of consciousness, and coming out of it, there's a nurse standing next to my bed. She's crying. She's crying because I told her my life story. Not that I think it's that damn sad anyway. With so much unwitnessed destruction in South Africa, I decide to take a journey to see what I could do to change things for the better in my country. By starting with the root of most of the crime in the country, addiction. It was discovered in the late 1960s by Howard Lotsoff that Ibogaine, a hallucinogenic substance found in the root of the West African plant Iboga, can interrupt a heroin addiction without withdrawal symptoms. The plant has a place in African ritual and traditional healing. It has only recently been introduced to Western medicine and is becoming popular in drug rehabilitation clinics around the world. The stigma of death surrounds it. My name is Pierre Leroux and I'm going to find the truth behind the boga. I have registered a rehab called the Alternative Rehab. Using the Ibogaine treatment I will attempt to rehabilitate a hardcore heroin addict. I'm going to start looking for one in Witbank. I have heard that Witbank in Mapumalanga has the highest density of heroin addicts in South Africa. I want to see it for myself. The community seems like they had enough. A drug problem, they don't buy sugar, they don't buy meat. They just, when you tell them you must walk nicely, just sleeping. When you tell him you must uh, make nice things, just tell you gonna kill you. When you get the money, just walk and buy, or the whole day gonna buy, buy, buy this thing. When this you, this nyao, when you tell him, hey, don't buy nyao, he say, don't tell me. It's, it's my lung, it's, it's right. It's my life. And, and my friend, you're in South Africa, eh? A white man like you, eh? Uh, it's don't smoke nyao, it's just use injection, right through a chofa, eh? A chofa, Mikaji. In a bed bunk, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's driving long time, my friend. If you're sitting here and you've got a drug lord that operates here every day, you've got Lizzie's fantasy land here, just down the road, about 500 meters from this park. And then black people are smoking the open. You know, my friend, and this is wrong. So all these ladies here, they are all part of this. Um, all go to this house. Um, crime, heroin crime headquarters. This um, dilapidated house over here. That is, that is what's going on here. Right, I can't you stop. I can imagine. This park is a well known user's hotspot. I've heard of people dying in the area. The problem is uh, people here is just smoking this shit. Uh, always when he's smoking the shit, he, uh, he's just sleeping and go. You know, and uh, this is shit. And when he's smoking, he's just steal the spoons, steal everything. It's just big crime here in South Africa. Yeah, the, this drug is causing a plenty problems because this this guy don't want to work and they are causing a problem hijacking people doing a bad things always always the people are afraid to, to stop on, on the stop street 
I, they I look at me. Yeah. I smoke quiche every day. Quiche makes me feel better when I'm smoking. You see, I've got a problem of aloster. You know what is the aloster? When you don't smoke, when you wake up at the end in the morning, you find your body is tired. Uh, you must smoke now and then, because if you are not smoking, if you're not smoking, you, your blood it stops. And we've approached the police, we've approached the designated police officials, and they all shrug their shol uh, shoulders. We've been dealing with drug abuse, or, or what people label addiction now. Uh, I see it as a, as a much more simple problem. I see, all the, see it as a failed coping mechanism. I see people as having a response to trauma, and a, and a way of trying to cope with this trauma and it can be socially acceptable or socially unacceptable as with drugs. To be honest with you, it's sold illegally into the system. There is no system. You're dealing with Africans. I did a lot of advertising around the area and eventually I got a call from Marcel who said his brother needed help. A week later I picked up my first addict and left for the mountains. Our client still had his kit on him. Die naweek is glad nie wat ek verwag het nie. Hulle sê is al alternative rehab. Ek het, ek het glad nie enig iets as dit verwag. My naam is Peter James. Ek kom van Witbank af. Ek is nou al so 3,5 jaar verslaaf aan die toon. Ek het nou iets niets probeer en toe het net nie ja. My broer is baie goed vir my. My ma, sy is ook daar vir my, sy ondersteun my daarom nog. Waar die ander mense nou my helemaal afgeskryf het. Hey, ons is ek eind ek sê nie, ons volg my mooie plek van die kamp. Ja, wat sê sê, weet ek sê. Ja, het is niet te laat om... Het is nogal eens opgewonden vandaag. Wie we gaan in doen maar wat is het, dus het werkt goed. Ik kan niet wachten om te zien wat gaat gebeuren. Lek maar een keer toch je wil op je vies. Ja, we gaan even weg. Er is al water. Ja. We hebben een beetje tijd kunnen schieten, hè? Ja, ik zie nou iets. Peter showed no signs of withdrawal or hysteria, normally associated with heroin withdrawal. I told Peter that his approach to life should be like target practice. Aim and take action. Then I handed him my gun. Aim. Ik heb het gehoord uit Gerico Shaira. Ik heb het al uit de klipraak geschiet. Ik ben nog altijd verbaasd. Hier is ook geen werk nog altijd goed. Man. Gewoontelijk tegen hier die tijd, je weet, als ik wakker word in die ochtend, dan onttrek ik al klaar. Erg. Dan heb ik al klaar begin om een plan uit te denken. Je weet, om hier te krijgen voor die dag. Maag is ongekrapt. Pene is zeer en die rug is zeer. Niet alles. En is ik nou nie, je weet plan kan maak vir genoeg daai nie dier die dag kan ek glad nie slaap nie aan dit is vir my dit is vir my die ergste hoor yes nee ek het nou al een paar keer getraai ophou maar elke keer is dit maar die onttrekking so het my terugkijk ja dit is vies so toe man so draak rarig erg begin voel dan kan ek nie meer nie dan maak ek nou maar een plan so ek dink as ek nou net eers by die onttrekking sê, dan verder, jy weet, die mindset is recht, so ek behoor het voel kan, ek 
voor het recht te wees. Dit hoeft niet te komen meer nie, dit is niet meer recht nie, dat is 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 recht nie,
I wonder how Peter is doing. Is Peter dreaming while he's awake? After some target practice and a little bit of ibogaine root bark, Peter had something to eat. Eber decided that they needed to take a swim for spiritual as well as physical yeah. cleansing. I really just wanted to see if they would do it. The water was too cold to properly plunge in, so Ebert and Peter preferred looking for crabs. Just there. Here you can see the plaque. Here is the last one. And then take another two, one there and one there. Yeah, it's not so three or four. It's not so bad, right? Yeah, it's a lot of years of work. A lot of years of work. Ja. En baie van my arre het al begin plaatval, soos hier die boe. Van te veel volk in spuit. Tja, ja. Sien ek het maar. Ja, ja, ek denk dat so weer van die sy. Dit was nou bykie rol vir die laaste tyd. Peter seemed like he had made up his mind. Next, I go to Kempton Park in Johannesburg to meet a clinic owner. My name is Kevin Walker. I'm a natural health practitioner and uh, I've been dealing with Ibogaine since uh, 2006 uh, to date and uh, we're now in January of 2014 um, and I've probably helped uh, in the vicinity of about 6700 patients with Ibogaine over the last uh, years. What one needs to understand is that Ibogaine is not a magic bullet. Whilst, whilst it is an excellent medium for taking a person from zero to hero within 24 hours and that's why it's of paramount importance that the, the, the patient in itself needs to remain in a controlled environment. The patient still needs to put in work but it's that much easier for the patient to go through and, uh, and um, start a new life, a clean life, a life of um, prosperous uh, if you know a future and a stable stable environment yes and what ibogaine tends to do is it, it's it, oh, uh, these are in little boxes and once you've ingested ibogaine this subconscious is naturally more acute or more aware and then you've also got the the, the subconscious which tends to open all those deep rooted thoughts of maybe the way you were raised as a kid or something like that all those little boxes tend to open and I almost call it a defragmentation really of the brain. Very similar to a computer. When your, your system jams on a computer, you go and you defragment drive your hard drive. What Ibogaine is doing is really defragmentizing your brain because it takes all of these good points, this point, this point, this point, whatever these points might be, and it collates it. So 
But once you start collectively putting the sky together and the grass together and the little tractors and you finish the whole puzzle, suddenly you've got this farmyard. That's exactly what Ibogaine does. Ibogaine transfers that, that mixed up mind back into a clearer picture. Ibogaine is a, a holistic healing experience because it takes care of, of, of a number of uh, issues uh, pertaining to addiction, of course, and uh, that is uh, the, the body in that uh, when you're on Ibogaine, you don't suffer with, with these withdrawals, these acute withdrawals that people normally associate to any opiate addiction, to heroin addiction, uh, to things like that. Uh, there are many different avenues at looking at Ibogaine. And uh, the, the problem with this is that the, the connotation uh, surrounding Ibogaine per se is that it's a psychedelic drug. In, in the early 60s with Howard Lotzoff, these people use it as a psychedelic experience and it has actually carried the or been associated to things like LSD and and so forth because these are also psychedelic drugs so so what happens is that it's, 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 it's put it into a box that box being psychedelics but and it hasn't been removed from that box in, into into a new box so to speak that, that is now medicine that can be utilized for an addiction that's the problem with Ibogaine. There's, the, the, there are amazing properties that can be um, uh, that can come from this this plant. Uh, in that it does help with healing. It has helped people with with uh, social problems um, in, in different areas. So it's a good all rounder in a, in a sense of, of not only helping the person with an addiction, it helps them through that as well, where it gives them a better frame of mind, it gives them the avenues and, and gives them a very good grounding for a better life thereafter on how to change and that it's possible to change because the cleaning process is that much quicker. In South Africa there are no legal avenues and there are no illegal avenues. Uh, at one stage there was uh, some research that was done via uh, UCT in the Cape and uh, the Medicine Control Council and so forth and to be quite honest with you I think they've merely shifted it underneath the, the, the carpet um, they haven't put much focus on it as such. We as Ibogaine South Africa, Ibogaine African Renaissance and Ibogaine Research Foundation um, try to overlook that scenario and we try to get it legalized under an African uh, ethno-medicine uh, scenario and uh, with that we, we joined up with IPASA, um, the South African uh, National, um, uh, what would you call it, control for African medicine um, and with that we utilize it in this country. As far as a, a medicine in, in, uh, per se, it's not legalized by the Control Council, the, the Medicine Controlled Council that is, although it should be. Kevin surely inspires me with his passion for rehabilitation. I think it's very nice to see some CBD. That's how Ricky sit and rest up with you, before it's now on the way. Back in the mountains, Peter is still not showing any signs of withdrawal. He is full of energy and wants to explore the cliffs in the area. After exploring the cliffs, we went to a nearby guest house where we could rest for the second night of Peter's detox on safari with us.
En dan elke keer als ik net piekje slag begin voelen, vat ik net weer een klein beetje hierboog in. Nee, maar net geplaat, je weet om te gaan voor die treatment. Ik maar net gewaar, ik ga net werken of niet, je weet. Maar, mm, ja. Zal maar zien, na, na die naweek zal ik het na één dag op de slag vat, hè. Peter seemed relieved that he was not going through withdrawal. I am also surprised. He then eats another gram of iboga root bark and then we all retire for the night. About a month after Peter's detox, a colleague from work contacted me and wanted help. We are on our way to Pretoria. My name is Matthew Brink. Um, I had some surgery on my thumb and I was in severe pain, so my doctor gave me these oxynorms, which is an opioid, Schedule 6. The pharmacy, and I've been taking them now for the last two months. And decided to try and get off them, but now it's a bit difficult. You know, it's the withdrawal, withdrawal, typical withdrawal, like from opiates. Sore body, sore joints, sore head, sore everything. So we're gonna go get some ibogaine to try and relieve these withdrawal symptoms from the opioids, from the prescription drugs. Wait my like it? Ibu guy. The Ibu guy root bark. It cheese eh? Fucking it's a grow dose doses. It is a dose of Ibu gain. It is for that, that lovely feeling. It goes off. Very good. Like Very good. Tastes like shit. Tastes like eating wood. So dust. Very sad. It's just a um, mental anticipation of mellowness. That's what it's supposed to do. It seems to me Matthew is feeling the first effects, but I don't know if so little ibogaine is going to relieve as much pain as he thinks it will. It's actually yellow right in the It's no two years old, but it's no so not tired. Okay, it feels like it's yellow right. It's got a little bit of a, you know, on the floor laying, rock, you know, track and all this. Now I'm getting wakker geworden for the night, and it feels like it's just a new moment. Verbazing. Ik heb gisteravond nu die lekkerste voeken aan te slapen gehad wat ik al een lang tijd gehad heb. Ja, een heel aan. Ik heb maar één keer gisteravond wakker geworden. Met een beetje afvraag gevoel. Toen kreeg ik maar nog zo'n beetje ibogeen bij die jubber. Ik weet niet waarna te slapen, ik heel aan hier. Zo, ik voel eigenlijk heel al uit vanochtend. Ik heb nu wakker geworden, koffie gedronken. 
Tengo un traje no Qué raro, qué claro, qué raro. Then the most amazing thing happens. My brother dropped in from Cape Town. He also wanted to try the African medicine. This is his story. My name is Don and I'm a addict. I'm a addict. This is for another work, man. Maybe I'm. Is it the greatest for slower? I can't even begin to be I can all anke dag geruke. Groot probleem of die jare. Dit was nooit 'n probleem nie. Nou jy skrik as dit dit. Nou hier dit doen dit nou, maar ek probeer. As ek nie joint dit nou, dit nie 'n probleem nie. Dan kan jy jy dit kom ons gaan koop joint. Ja. So dan. Ek het nou hierdie baie kom hierdie hoop om nooit weer te dink aan dag gaan. Ja, dit was. Ek dink wat pas hier. Die naweek is glad nie wat ek verwag het nie. Hulle sê is al alternative rehab, ek het, ek het glad nie enig iets is dit verwag. Ek het ons het vrydag weggetrek daar in Witbank. Ons het nie eens precies geweet waarom toe ons rui nie. <laughs> maar ons het op een baie lekker plek opgeëind na vrydag aand. Ons het lekker gekamp, ek het baie genie. Um, Saterdag ochend, ek het nie. Ik heb hier een rare slag gevoel, maar ik heb eindelijk wel goed gevoel. En ons het maar, je weet, de hele dag, zaterdag, maar net een van dag gehad hier. Ik ben net rondgereden. Een paar goedjes gedaan, het was bij het dam, het was bij lekker geweest. Ik heb toen nog gestrand, die oor geslapen en mijn shadow door. En, dus, ik heb gisteren aan. Ik heb eigenlijk een lekker hand te slapen gehad. Gewoonlijk kan ik glad niet slapen als ik niet meer mee rouw en in het niet maak. Ik heb gestrand, raar af, lekker geslapen. En ik voel nu volgend tussen een nieuwe mens. Ik heb niks onttrekkings, niks niet. En ik heb nog niet eens Ibo Gain gevat. Ik heb nog niks gehad. Nie. Maar ik voel daarom. Ik voel die heel Ik krijg niks onttrekkings niet. Niks. Ja, en nou hoor ik voor hier zijn tijd gaan ons zeker maar terug gaan naar huis toe. Zo gelijk het om nog, nog langer aan te blijven maar. Dus moet zeker maar huis toe gaan. <laughs> Kijk, als ik nu bij die huis kom, ik denk ik ga maar net zo ver als mogelijk weg blijven van van die heroen af en enig iemand wat geassocieerd wordt met heroen ek kan maar ver blij zijn, ver weg blij daar vanaf, jy weet want ek ga nie weer relaps nie het is nou raar, ek is, ek is moeg vir die goed jy weet het, dit was lekker geweest in die begin maar na ruk en dan, dan raak het net nie meer lekker nie, jy weet dan doen jy het omdat jy het moet doen, want jy onttrek en moet so aan jy weet so dit is so, die de laatste paar maanden is ik zo so gehad vol vero en ik heb het maar net gevat omdat ik al altijd moet trek. Ja. So nou, ik denk nou, nou als ik terugkom met wat bang, ik zal wel uit weer zo. So. Maar mijn airbike die vaat, die weet. Maar van vooraf begin. Maar weer in het nieuwe leven opbouw. Weet, weer ordentelijke vrienden krijgen. Ja, ze so misschien wel een dag kunnen ook. Maar ik geloof. Ik geloof dat het voor mij wel goed gaan. Ja, want ik heb het voel gereed. Ik so. geloof Ja, ik voel het erg gereed. Ik so. zeker dingen gaan voor mij nu. Dit gaan voor mij werken. Ik ben erg verbaasd in die e game Dat is niks wat ik. Je weet, ik heb het glad niet verwacht, nie, maar dat werkt hoor. Yes. I told Peter during his experience to find a power totem. He found this piece of bone. It is an oxtail segment. I hope it keeps him on track.
Peter arrived home. His brother was waiting and glad to see him. He seemed skeptical and amazed all at once. I kept in contact with them on a weekly basis. Peter struggled with sleep for about three weeks. Then it normalized. It wasn't easy. It is now almost nine months later and Peter is still clean and going strong. Um. I don't know, we need help, please people help. So Melazame, he plan which he must just try a plan to to make a medicine. Yeah, It's illegal in the States and several other countries. We need to we need to get evil game to fix our people. Because I'm going to go to the documentary and it will help for the party mensen. So come on, let's take it help. I say goodbye to my brother and can only hope he finds some resolution in the days to come. Driving that train. I on the book. Yes, Jones to better just be. Matthew's withdrawal pains went away slightly, but his hands still hurt. He was disappointed. I guess Ibogaine can't heal all. Matthew thinks he should have had a stronger dose. It truly turned out to be an Ibogaine safari after all, but I cannot help to think of the number of people out there that still needs help. If it's your child or someone's child you know, does it really matter how they get saved? What I think should be known is that Ibogaine is not a walk in the park. It's a, a serious a decision that the patient needs to make. And uh, coupled, coupled with that is that Ibogaine is not just for everybody. Um, you have to be, uh, A, you have to be ready to, to, to go into a walk. Understand, like I said earlier on in the program, that Ibogaine uh, is not a magic bullet. So you have to be treatment ready. Ik kan niet wachten om te zien wat gaat gebeuren.